Welcome to the Rewriting Narrative series part 49. This is a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the story from a personal taste. Please everybody like this video. We didn't even get close to reaching the like goal in the last one. So please let's reach 4,000 likes in this one. It takes two seconds. And I've been very consistent with the uploads. I think I deserve a like, right? Also subscribe if you haven't already and definitely ring those notifications because it helps the channel out and it helps you know when the rewrites come out. Let's get going. Rock Lee beamed towards Sasuke with insane speed. His steps destroyed the ground beneath him, and the overwhelming power of the Sixth Gate that exuded out of his body ripped his white Konoha cloak into pieces. Sasuke's Sharingan spawn. He looked at Rock Lee with intense focus, readying himself for the battle to come. Leaf Windstorm! Lee shouted, throwing a powerful kick. Sasuke ducked, dodging the strike, but he still felt a powerful gust of air from the speed of the blow. Lee vanished, leaving a green after image behind him and appearing from behind Sasuke as he destroyed the ground beneath it. Sasuke's Sharingan moved fast and his feet were quick to respond. He dodged Lee's follow-up kick and spun, throwing a kick against Rock Lee's face, but Lee blocked it with his forearm. Lee then circumvented Sasuke again, launching a kick from behind, but once again Sasuke's Sharingan perceived his movements, allowing Sasuke to dodge and counterattack, unleashing a flurry of strikes against Rock Lee, who erupted it into motion in a quick defensive formation, dodging and parrying Sasuke's strikes. The punches and kicks Sasuke through were precise and difficult to read, but Lee's speed didn't let him be touched. It twist his feet and once again left behind a green after image appearing on Sasuke's other side. This time Lee threw a punch at Sasuke's face who dodged, but then Lee whirled in the opposite direction of his punch and unleashed a spinning elbow strike. The green chakra of the sixth gate became a vortex and his speed created a shockwave of its own. Leaf Ultra Tempest! A white snake emerged from Sasuke's neck and wrapped itself around his face. Lee's elbow impacted the snake exploding it and sent Sasuke flying away like a rocket. He cruised the forest, hitting a long section of trees, passing straight through them until he finally landed. Still managing to fall on his feet, he stared at Rock Lee through the corner of fallen trees. It was easy to see him because of his green aura. That was dangerous. If I hadn't used the snake, it would have been catastrophic, Sasuke thought, staring at Lee as more trees fell in between them. He could perceive my movements. Outflanking him didn't work so well, but my last strike was good. In that case, Lee vanished, and in a split second he was on top of Sasuke, aiming a massive downward kick at him. Sasuke reacted by dashing away. Lee hit the ground in the forest, creating a massive explosion that lifted up rocks and dust. He emerged from the cloud of dust, a green beast, and streaked towards Sasuke. Lee aimed a punch, but Sasuke managed to dodge. He was now on the defensive, running away from Lee, who in turn assaulted Sasuke, trying to catch him from every side. Sasuke's responses were fast and precise. Dodging Lee's attacks. When Lee missed, he hit trees, hillsides, and the ground itself, creating a trail of destruction in the forest. It was as though those solid surfaces meant nothing to him. I can't believe he can match my speed in the sixth gate. This Sharingan is something else, but he's on the run, and I already landed the attack. So if I keep going, I can win this, Lee thought, as he felt his muscles all around his body beginning to shred. The sharp pain was excruciating, it came in waves, flooding his brain, but he still had much more power in him. He trained to maintain the sixth gate for much longer after his fight against Koksu and also improved its speed and power. Lee launched a taijutsu combo of quick jabs and spinning kicks. Sasuke dodged and countered as Lee hit a tree behind him. Sasuke landed a punch to Lee's gut, but Lee kept going. Sasuke's attack did not overpower the sixth gate. Lee advanced, cornering Sasuke. There was a large stone wall right behind him, meaning that Sasuke couldn't retreat, and Lee used that chance to throw a kick at Sasuke's face. Sasuke moved his head out of the way, but Lee Lee changed the trajectory of the kick at the last second, hitting Sasuke on the chest, which pinned him down against the rock wall, creating a sideways critter on it. Cracks exuded out of it, the entire rock wall was crumbling, but Sasuke was stuck and he grunted in pain. I told you Sasuke Uchiha, hard work pays off! Lee threw a massive punch to finish the fight. <laughs> この記憶 
Sasuke weaved a one-handed hand sign and ignited a powerful stream of lightning around himself, hitting Lee in the process, who winced from the electric shock. The strength of Lee's leg pinning Sasuke down wavered, and Sasuke knocked it to the side with his forearm, enveloping it with lightning. This allowed Sasuke to sidestep Lee's punch in a fluid and elegant motion. Lee's strike hit the wall behind Sasuke, destroying it completely with a furious explosion that sent a shockwave through the forest. Impressive. It's been a long time since I fought a human that was faster than me, Sasuke said, sliding back. Rock Lee gave chase. I am indeed faster, but it's not like the last time when Sasuke couldn't do anything about my strikes. In the last fight, he could barely see my movements, and now the gap of speed is much smaller. His speed is insane. I have to get to the sixth gate to reach it, and I'm a Taijutsu specialist, and unlike me, he doesn't have to destroy his body to reach that level of speed. Besides, those lightning discharges are problematic. I have to get near him to strikes, so if he uses them, there's no way I can avoid it. The talent of the Uchiha is really something else, Lee thought as he launched a Taijutsu barrage. Sasuke ran away from it, being careful not to get cornered against the wall again. He jumped up as he fled, leaping from tree to tree, zigzagging to avoid Lee's strikes, which disintegrated every tree they touched. I respect you, Rock Lee. The Wheel of Destiny has not favored you, and yet you didn't acquiesce. You sought power despite your limitations, even if you destroy your body in the process. I understand your struggle. No, you don't! Lee punched so hard, bolstered by his anger, that the shockwave of his attack shattered dozens of trees behind it after Sasuke dodged it. Someone like you who drowns in the purest natural talent could never understand! Lee managed to sweep Sasuke's legs with a fast spinning low kick, dropping him off the canopy, and he throwed a follow-up punch. Sasuke managed to protect himself with a white snake once more, which Lee's punch destroyed, but Sasuke himself rocketed down in a vertical trajectory, propelled by Lee's attack. He hit the ground, exploding it, and destroyed a large section of the forest, created a massive crater in the process. But that's my advantage! Geniuses don't understand what I had to go through to become strong, and so they don't know how to fight me. That's why the genius cannot beat the hard worker! Lee beamed down, throwing a guillotine downwards kick. In the last second, Sasuke jumped to the side, spinning in the air and avoid Lee's strike. Lee impacted the crater, making another explosion and expanding its size. Sasuke landed next to the crater and wiped a line of blood that dripped from his mouth. He looked down at Lee, who oozed the green energy of the sixth gate. If that's the case, then why did you lose to Gara? Lee winced. That was the worst moment of his life. He lost to someone who didn't even move to fight in the most brutal way possible. To someone who had at the time relied on talent alone. That was an exception. I wasn't ready. I hadn't trained hard enough. It's not a crime. I lost to him as well. But this really doesn't seem to align with your words, does it? He relied on his talent more than anyone else. And yet, you lost to him. Also, why did you lose to Dosu? I had to come and rescue you in the forest of death, remember? I was outnumbered! So your hard work only goes so far, huh? I will show you! I can be a greater shinobi than you! You have no idea of my sacrifice! Lee said as his muscle fibers ripped. He concentrated and built up the power of the gates. As I said before, I do understand what it feels like to destroy your body in the search for power. The left half of Sasuke's face was taken by the patterns of the first stage of his curse mark. Whether you like it or not, the Wheel of Destiny has favored me even less than you, regardless of my talent. What happened to you was tragic, but the way you go about solving it is wrong. You just want revenge. You don't care about your comrades. Sasuke narrowed his eyes. I will beat you and open your eyes wide. The hard worker will triumph over the genius. Then answer me this, Rock Lee. What happens when the genius works harder than the hard worker? Ridiculous! Sasuke scoffed, and Rock Lee exploded into motion, releasing the energy he built up and beamed at Sasuke like a green comet. A colossal column of smoke rose from the evacuated city where Jugo fought against the Leaf Heavy Alliance. Debris fell from the sky kilometers away from the epicenter of Jugo's Jutsu Impact, which leveled half of the buildings in the city, and a constant rumbling sound echoed with a somber, powerful tone as the cloud of dust and wreckage danced in the sky with a macabre yet mesmerizing whirl. Jugo stared at his own destruction with eyes filled with bloodlust. The Curse Mark's thirst for death hadn't been quenched yet. It demanded more. It had drawn so much energy into Jugo's body that he increased in size, turning three meters tall, and his muscles were bulky. His insanity increased as well. The more chakra he drew, which made 
made him even more insane, creating a snowball of death. Where was the next city? Destroy them all would be the only way to satisfy the curse mark. Those puny weaklings were nothing compared to his power, but he needed to see their blood. Pathetic! You didn't even show me your guts because you got vaporized! I need to see your blood! Jugo screamed towards where the Leaf Heavy Alliance once stood before he shot his final chakra beam. Karin opened her eyes after hearing Jugo's voice. It was dark, but she was alive. She realized she was hugging Sugetsu's water gelatin form as she braced for her imminent death. But once she was sure she wasn't about to die anymore, she quickly let go of him and pretended it never happened. How are we alive? Karin asked. Sakura looked around themselves. Some sort of dome-like barrier surrounded them. The barrier moved in a wavy pattern and Sakura caught a glimpse of gold. Next time I'll make sure to kill you slowly! <laughs> Jugo kept on screaming as the smoke dispersed, but then he realized that amidst the destruction sat a golden sphere right where his targets were. What's that? The end of the line, a voice said coming from above. Jugo looked up and saw Shino hovering dozens of meters above the city on a cloud of dark insects. What? I'll rip you into pieces too! Jugo shot a chakra beam towards Shino. The cloud of insects moved out of the way and the beam kept rising up into the sky. Shino looked at the destroyed section of the city and sighed in regret. Damn it. I miscalculated. I should have returned right away, he said to no one in particular. It's Shino, Sakura said, realizing the insects protected them from the blast. She had never seen that golden variety, though, and she couldn't fathom how they managed to withstand such a powerful explosion without all dying in the process. We should stay put and let Shino handle things. We would just get in the way. Oh, it's Bug Man. I didn't know he could do this. So he gets too sad and passed out. He can't beat Jugo by himself. Only Sasuke can subdue him at this point. No, Shino can do it. How can you say that after you saw Jugo's firepower? Because Shino has never lost a fight. Shino erupted into motion, zigzagging on top of his insect cloud as Jugo shot a barrage of curse mark chakra beams. He dodged them all as the powerful chakra blasts colored the sky above the city. It seems a curse mark made him completely insane, like Sasuke in the land of Grey. I have to keep my distance to avoid those long-range strikes and draw him out of the city so he won't destroy it anymore. And I also have to take them away from Kiba and the others so he can actually use the golden thief bugs to attack. Shino thought. You'll never kill me! He yelled, goading Jugo into following him. He flew over the destroyed section of the city so Jugo would not destroy the part that remained standing. He chased Shino down, shooting chakra blasts. The amount of chakra he has is enormous and his speed is troublesome. Shino thought, looking down as they reached the forest outside of the city. I'll squash you like an insect! Jugo screamed and created large boosters that emerged from his back and ignited them. The force propelled Jugo up in the air in a diagonal line heading straight to Shino, who flew out of Jugo's trajectory, dodging the initial strike. But a curse mark cannon emerged from his arm and shot a thin yet powerful chakra beam, swinging his arm towards Shino. The beam she through Shino's stomach, cutting him in half. Sasuke dodged Lee's comet strike. Lee hit the trees behind Sasuke, leaving a green trail of destruction as the trees were shot hundreds of meters to all directions. What? He dodged that? It's probably the curse mark enhancing his speed. Damn it! Lee turned around and dashed back, but this time Sasuke dashed against him. Half of his face was consumed by the patterns of his curse mark and he ignited a constant stream of lightning around his body. The two clashed. Their forearms collided against each other, creating a powerful shockwave of green energy and blue lightning. Sasuke's showering gun met Lee's gaze. His now red skin was consumed by bulged out veins. He felt the power of the gates destroying his body, and Sasuke's lightning caused him even more pain. The two fell back and re-engaged. Sasuke threw quick punches and kicks. Lee blocked them, punching Sasuke back. But Sasuke dodged as well, throwing a swirling kick that Lee caught with his right hand, holding his leg in place. But because of that, the lightning stream attacked Lee from a much closer distance, piercing his body. Sasuke launched himself in the 
air with the other leg and kicked Lee. The lightning from that attack compounded with the lightning from the leg Lee was holding, forcing Lee to release Sasuke's leg. The kick pushed him back and he slided back. Lee couldn't stay in melee for too long, or the lightning jutsu would become too dangerous as the current kept on passing through his heart and muscles, so Lee had to hit and run. He dashed, becoming a blur of green energy. Sasuke dashed as well, becoming a blur of blue lightning. The two blurs clashed against each other, creating another shockwave. Lee disengaged and quickly advanced again, clashing one more time, emitting another explosion as Sasuke managed to block Lee's attacks. The two blurs danced around the forest, ignoring the trees and simply passing through them as if they weren't even there. They clashed again and again. Each time they did so, another shockwave erupted through the forest. Their speed was so intense that the two blurs of light created after images that destroy the forest behind them. They smashed into each other dozens of times per second, creating a sequence of shockwave blasts that sent more green energy and lightning into the forest, cracking rocks and trunks, destroying everything. Sasuke flared his curse mark, increasing its potency, drawing more chakra, and wrapping snakes around the body parts that he used to block Lee's attacks. The snakes were all destroyed whenever Lee hit them, but with the power of the curse mark, Sasuke could match Lee's strength. You haven't answered my question. What happens when the genius works harder than the hard worker? The question is meaningless! If you think you work harder than me, you're delusional, Sasuke Uchiha! Lee said as the two clashed even more. That's narrow-minded of you. Just because Neji didn't work as hard as you, it doesn't mean I couldn't do so. I remember you saying that the first time we fought. The Neji was the one you really wanted to fight. And you have surpassed him without the shadow of a doubt. But as I showed you, Neji and I are not the same. Even still, I'll prove it to you, Sasuke Uchiha! I won't let you go unpunished after what you did to my friends! My hard work surpasses your genius! My willpower is greater than yours, especially when I fight for them! Fighting for them, huh? Power is something created by physical phenomena. They clashed more, and Lee felt agonizing pain in every muscle of his body. The sixth gate was taking its toll, and he wasn't making any progress. But still, Lee had one more card to play. Guys, Sensei, please make this work. It's the culmination of all our training, and once I use it all up, the sixth gate will run out, so please, let it work! Lee disengaged from the clashes against Sasuke and slided back, assuming an exotic stance with one hand closed on his forehead and another hand open on his chest. The hidden Lee lotus blossoms twice, but he could never do so without the sun, which provides the fire of youth that stokes our spirits is the same that carries our will. Lee told Sasuke, who stared at him with his Sharingan. Gai-sensei, so you'll teach me the morning peacock now that I mastered the sixth gate? Lee remembered him asking Gai-sensei. Don't be a fool, Lee! The inner gates are a manifestation of the user's guts and determination. You can't just copy my jutsu, it's simply impossible. You'll have to develop your own. And how do I do that? Isn't it obvious? We're gonna train until you pass out, haha! <laughs> Inner gates, astral formation, solar posture! The power of the sixth gate surged within, ripping his muscles apart. That power provided him overwhelming strength. Rock Lee flung his arms to the side, and the speed with which he moved them ignited the air around them. Fire streaked to both directions through sheer friction. Lee moved so fast this time that a column of fire trailed behind the green blur. The golden thief bugs protecting the Leaf Heavy Alliance flew away, undoing the dome shape. Their speed was uncanny and they traveled towards the direction Jugo and Shino went as a single unit. These things are really fast, Karin said in surprise. The two halves of Shino's corpse plummeted down and Jugo cackled in laughter midair, igniting his booster to propel himself down towards Shino's body. He crushed him with an impact to the ground. Jugo's stomp formed a crater, but Shino's two halves didn't explode into blood. Rather, they erupted into a cloud of dark bugs that swarmed Jugo. Ah, insects! I'll destroy you! The bugs formed themselves as an orb around Jugo and leached his chakra, covering his entire body from all sides. He produced cannons that emerged from his back, breaking through the thick layer of insects. The flash cannons bent backwards and charged a chakra blast, aiming at Jugo himself. As the cannons charged, the insects entered them, clogging the passage of chakra like they did 
did to Zaku's airburst hands in the Chuni exams. When the cannons ignited, however, they were blasted out. Jugo's cannon barrels were much wider than Zaku's, and the power of the blast far more potent. Many of the insects couldn't clog the passage like they did back then. Jugo's chakra beams showered over him, annihilating the swarm of bugs that drained his chakra. Jugo laughed. Now with a few scorch marks, he dealt himself. Was that it? Bugs won't satisfy me! So my regular insects are completely ineffective, the real Shino thought, hiding in the canopy of the forest and looking at Jugo from a distance. He didn't know where Shino was. In that case, Shino uncorked one of his gourds, and a thin, small, and almost invisible cloud of flying lice made their way towards Jugo. The tiny insects were so spread out, it was pretty much impossible to detect them with the naked eye, and they managed to land all around Jugo's body without him even noticing. The insects began to leech Jugo's chakra once more, but because they were so small and Shino couldn't use too many of them so Jugo wouldn't notice, their chakra drain didn't affect Jugo too much. Where are you, you pathetic little bug? Show yourself, let's play! Jugo screamed into the forest around him, unaware tiny little bugs were all over him. The lice won't be enough. The curse mark draws chakra much faster than my lice can drain. In that case, dozens of Shino centipedes emerged from the ground surrounding Jugo. He immediately unleashed chakra beams with his hands, hitting the ground around them and destroying the long insects. But the centipedes were meant to attack. Rather, a small swarm of golden thief bugs emerged from the holes the centipedes had carved through the ground with their earth style. Jugo shot at them. But the bugs sustained the power of his blast. They were resistant to blunt force damage, and they could also dodge the beams easily with their great speed. Their movements were so fast, and they could change trajectories midair with such a terse motion that their flying resembled dragonflies. Shino commanded two small swaths of flying lice to clog both of his ears, and the golden thief bugs that flew in circles around Jugo unleashed their high-pitched sound blast, directing it straight to Jugo's ears with pinpoint accuracy. Jugo screamed in agony from the torturing sound assaulting him, but to Shino's surprise, his reaction was brisk. He grew lumps of cursed mark flash on the side of his head that covered the entirety of the ears, blocking the sound and the scream ceased. This futile Dosa taught me how to counter sound attacks. Now, where are you? Cannons emerged from all over Jugo's body and shot chakra beams to all directions, destroying the forest around him and clearing a large section. Shino managed to dodge the wild blasts, but now he didn't have a place to hide near Jugo anymore, so he simply stood on the ashen ground of the now clearing and stared at Jugo's face with an unfazed expression. There you are, tired of living? Shino didn't answer. It made no sense to argue with a wild beast. Jugo roared, creating boosters on his back, which ignited and propelled him forward straight at Shino. He created a blade on his arm. Die! He swung, but the golden thief bugs manifested themselves in front of Shino and formed a flying golden shield that intercepted the attack. Jugo twisted his back boosters forward and around the shield, bypassing it and aimed them point blank at Shino, charging a chakra blast barrage. It would strike him from all sides. The cannons ignited and consumed Shino, exploding a massive section of the clearing and then the forest behind him. Lee screamed from the pain, but he moved forward, fire coalescing behind him. Sasuke flared his curse mark even more. The first stage spread around his entire body, and he weaved one-handed signs with both hands simultaneously. Lee kicked. Sasuke dashed back to dodge the kick, but it created a rupture of fire in the air that expanded towards Sasuke. Water style. Water wall. Sasuke released one of his jutsu, spitting water, which formed into a wall, but the fire simply carved through it turning the water into steam and hitting Sasuke, flunging him backwards. Lee chased after him, leaving a trail of fire behind, circumvented Sasuke and threw a punch against him while he was still in the air. A large white snake surrounded Sasuke, intercepting the blow, but the punch exploded into fire, flunging Sasuke in the opposite direction, still surrounded by the white snake, which became a fireball. Lightning dragon! He released the second jutsu towards Lee, but Lee exploded through it. The fire 
coalesced around him blew away the lightning dragon, which erupted into thin streaks of lightning, hitting the forest around them. Solar flare! Lee punched again. This time, a thick beam of fire erupted from his fist. Fire style! Great dragon flame! Sasuke sped a dragon from within his snake, sending it against Lee's beam. They clashed, exploding into a beautiful incandescent vortex, sending fire all around the forest, burning a massive area around them. Sasuke jumped away. Out of the middle of the burning snake, Barak Lee appeared above him. Dozens, if not hundreds of meters above him this time, and his fist was blazing with fire. Sasuke weaved hand signs as fast as he could. Fire style! Great dragon song! He spat fire dragons that rose up in the air towards Lee, but they missed and cruised up towards the sky. Barak Lee sent all the remaining power of the sixth gate into his right fist. He overlooked Sasuke while he was in the air. This next attack could not miss. Sasuke tossed a large Fuma Shuriken against Lee, who simply caught it in the air with his left hand as he charged up his final attack, but it was a Shadow Shuriken Jutsu. The Shuriken hidden underneath struck Lee's ribcage, carving deep into his bone because of the lightning style Sasuke imbued it with, but Lee ignored it. It was too deep in, and he had to land his final strike. Primordial Furnace! He punched the air. His fist was invisible due to the speed, but it ignited a flash of blinding light that manifested itself in the sky. It flooded the landscape with white light that permeated everything, forcing Sasuke to close his eyes. The power of the sun struck the ground, igniting the forest into a blast of cataclysmic proportions. The explosion rose up, forming a mushroom cloud. The power of his own strike sent Lee flying up hundreds and hundreds of meters. He felt immeasurable pain, and the power of the sixth gate was depleted. He saw the mushroom cloud rising from the forest, and he could just hope that Sasuke somehow survived that. Once he reached the plateau of his ascension, Lee plummeted. He was hundreds of meters up in the air, and he couldn't move because of the damage the gates caused him. The best thing he could do was to brace for impact. I killed that guy! I killed him! <laughs> Jugo screamed as the smoke of his chakra blast dispersed, but it revealed a golden figure standing tall dozens of meters away from Jugo, right in the middle of the wide groove created by Jugo's previous attack. The golden thief bugs had all coalesced on Shino himself, forming a suit of golden shiny armor that waved in hypnotic patterns as the bugs moved. They protected Shino from the attack coming from all sides, and the bugs covered every single part of his body. Body. You just stay dead! Jugo dashed at him, creating blade on both of his arms now. But Shino readied himself, raising his arms and blocked the strikes. Jugo unleashed a flurry of chaotic slashes and thrusts, screaming in hatred. The curse mark needed him dead. But the insect armor moved extremely fast, dodging and blocking Jugo's erratic, yet fast attacks. Shino's shiny golden form managed to strike some punches back at Jugo, but they did absolutely no damage. That's puny! Jugo then created comically large boosters on his right elbow and a sword-like curse mark extension on his right hand. The boosters exploded forward, propelling his arm with more speed than any attack he had thrown today. The flash blade penetrated the golden insect armor in the middle of Shino's chest and crossed his form completely, piercing the back of the armor and exiting on the other side. Now, let me see your gut. Jugo yanked the blade out, but there was no blood on it, nor on the golden thief bugs themselves. The golden suit of armor unmade itself. The golden thief bug swarmed at Jugo and revealed that the armor had been simply a husk with no one inside. Jugo had been fighting against a mere swarm of golden thief bugs that resembled Shino's form. Centipedes emerged from the ground dozens of meters behind Jugo, and the real Shino came out of the ground with them. The golden thief bugs had indeed formed into a suit of armor to protect Shino from the Chakra Blast Barrage, but the blast hushed him backwards, and once it stopped, Shino used the smoke and dust it lifted to sneak out of the suit of golden armor and use his centipedes to burrow underground, using their earth style to close the holes not to draw any suspicion. The husk of armor then engaged Jugo in close quarters, fooling him into believing Shino was in there, and goaded Jugo into striking from up close, so that the golden thief bugs could swarm and touch Jugo from all sides. Shino looked at the swarm. It was a golden orb 
orb that obscured Jugo fully. He tried to create curse mark spikes that came out of his body to pierce the orb that was surrounding him, but they only dislodged a few golden thief bugs that quickly covered the holes back again. Jugo also created new chakra cannons that twisted, aiming for himself, and showered the golden thief bugs with powerful chakra blasts, but they withstood them. Smoke rose from the reflective golden surface of the bugs, but the swarm didn't budge at all, and they started to shake. Every single golden thief bug vibrated so fast that they became a blur. I was hoping the sound wave vortex would be enough to knock you down. This ability is far more dangerous. From within the golden blur, Jugo began to scream. The bug's vibration created a powerful low-pitched rumble, but the sound wasn't the source of Jugo's agony. It was the heat. The intense vibration of the swarm created a ludicrous amount of heat, sending waves that radiated inwards omnidirectionally, cooking alive whatever found itself inside the swarm. It didn't matter how many layers of curse mark shields Jugo created to protect himself, for they were all made of flesh, and the heat would transfer through them as easily as it would through any other medium. This jutsu wasn't like a regular fire style attack. Unlike fire that burned the target from the outside, the heat wave was invisible, and it penetrated the target, boiling blood and frying internal organs, and it did so fast. Jugo's scream ceased, and the swarm dispersed, as an unconscious Jugo fell to the ground. The curse mark had retracted, and red burns were visible all around his body, but the real danger was the internal organs. He was breathing, the breath was shallow, but Shino managed to defeat Jugo without killing him. Even still, the omnidirectional heat transmission demanded a lot of chakra, and he wouldn't be able to use the golden thief bugs for a week now. Shino was low on chakra, and many of his regular insects were destroyed. Also, judging by the state of the others, which he saw for a split second before he sent his golden thief bugs to protect them, they weren't in a good state to resume the search for the day. But at least now they had Sasuke's allies. Naruto, Yamato, Ino, and their dogs dashed through the forest, closing in on Team Neji's position. The three dogs from Team Neji then reached them. What happened? Yamato asked. Neji told us to stay away from Sasuke so he wouldn't know Kakashi was here. Has Kakashi Senpai arrived yet? No, he's late. You're getting here first. How far away are they? Naruto yelled. About five kilometers. Come on, we gotta hurry! Naruto said. He jumped past the forest canopy and saw a dark cloud of smoke in the direction of Team Neji. The forest there raged in fire. The fight's already out of control! A blinding flash of light forced him to close his eyes. Naruto fell back to the forest, disoriented because of this temporary blindness, though Yamato caught him with his wood style. The ones who stayed below were not blinded because the forest itself shielded them from the flash of light. A shockwave hit them about 15 seconds after Yamato caught Naruto. It was the sound of a powerful explosion. What? The hell? Yamato sat, dashing beyond the canopy, and he saw something terrifying. A mushroom cloud rising from the direction of the fight. Damn it! Why is Kakashi late? We have to hurry, he thought. Naruto blinked, fighting off his temporary blindness. Let's go, everyone! Yeah, we have to go, and keep your guards high! The battle sounds coming from outside of the city where Jugo and Shino were fighting ceased. Sakura and Karin looked in that direction with apprehensive faces, but they saw a flying form returning at them with a sluggish pace. Shino flew on top of a thin cloud of insects, carrying Jugo's unconscious body. He landed next to the party. What? He defeated Jugo in that state? And he doesn't have a single scratch on him? How? Karin stared at Shino in astonishment. He lowered Jugo gently next to Kiba, Akamaru and Sugetsu, and also the random old lady. They were all unconscious. Shino fixed his gaze on Karin. His all-knowing dark goggles made her feel small. Where's Sasuke? He asked with a cold voice that made Karin shiver. Lying to him seemed like a terrible idea, so Karin told him the truth. He's investigating possible Akatsuki hideouts, looking for Itachi, and will eventually get to Ariguru, the port city. And where were you going to meet him? Halfway through Ariguru and this city. Shino commanded his flying lies to Karin's ears, blocking them to make sure Karin wouldn't hear anything. Shino then tied her hands behind her back with a piece of metal wire he can't in his ninja bag. Karin motioned to protest, but a single stare from Shino was enough to shut her up. Then he's far away from us, and we can't really go anywhere in our state. But we can pass it along to Ino once she reaches out to us again. She's probably doing it less frequently to save Chakra, as the distances between the teams are much larger than usual. Should we rest here? Sakura said. Yes, we should help with the evacuees as well. I saw them in the outskirts of the city as I was making my way here, and I had to make sure to draw the battle the opposite direction. I'm sorry I didn't arrive sooner. I encountered something unexpected. 
expected on the way. What was it? An Akatsuki. Who? Datara, the one of the explosions. So he's here too? Yes, the one who destroyed the waterfall village. The one you fought rescuing the Kazekage. Are you sure it's him? There is no doubt. How did you find him? It wasn't hard at all. He was screaming in the middle of the forest, calling out for someone named Toby. I lurked around him without being noticed for a while, trying to see if he would take me somewhere like a hideout or encounter any other Akatsuki, maybe even Itachi. But I had no luck. He just kept on shouting for Toby and he looked livid. I thought about engaging him seeing that I had the element of surprise, but according to the reports he was exceptionally powerful and taking him out by myself wouldn't be easy. I probably would have tried if I didn't know you were here fighting. Well, I'm glad you decided to rush for our help. You saved our lives. I am glad as well. But before I left Adara's sight, I managed to leave a female bug on him. My insects will be able to track him with great precision once we are rested. Oh, that's great! It could lead us to Itachi! And we somehow managed to capture Sasuke's allies as well. The only thing I regret is the damage to the city. But for now, we rest. Once we hear from Inu again, we'll know what Battalion Lord Kakashi will have us do. Kakashi looked at Toby with a concerned and sweaty face. The trees around them were broken and splintered with several scorch marks and trailing smoke. Kuna is in shuriken stuck on the ground and the trees as well. Battle scars from the jutsus Kakashi tried against the weird Akatsuki. It doesn't matter what I do, it's as though he can predict everything I throw against him, Kakashi thought. Mr. Copy Ninja, this Sharingan of yours is super intimidating, but I have to admit it's super duper cool. Ah, he really gives you this aura of a legendary shinobi. Do you think he would look as cool on me as well? Toby poked into the dark hole of his mask with his index finger, but Kakashi remained silent. Oh, of course not. I could never be as cool as you. If he continues like this, I'll run out of chakra soon, and I won't have anything left to fight Sasuke. I'll forget that. He'll kill me, but I have no choice. This guy, I'll take him out before he becomes more problematic, and hope the other teams can help Team Neji against Sasuke. Kakashi weaved hand signs. Fire style. Ground ignition! He plunged his hand into the ground and it lit on fire. The flames chased Toby, traveling fast and consuming the forest. Oh, that's hot! Toby yelled and ran away. Earth style. Mud wall. A wall of stone rose out of the ground, blocking Toby from running away from the fire. Ah, he's gonna burn me! Toby jumped over the wall as the fire hit it. But before he landed on the other side, Kakashi had already finished another sequence of hand signs. Earth style. Dark swamp. Toby landed on the thick swamp. His feet began to sink, and the wall behind him returned to the ground, allowing the fire to advance again. I can't let him weave hand signs to escape, Kakashi thought, weaving more signs of his own. Earth style, mud binding! Mud hands emerged from the swamp beneath Toby, grasping each of his arms, opening them up and pinning Toby completely. He wouldn't be able to weave signs that way. Lightning style, lightning hound! A great lightning hound erupted from Kakashi's palm and dashed towards Toby through the flames. The hound leaped at him opening its electric maw. At the same time, the wave of fire crashed down upon the Akatsuki. The forest erupted into a massive explosion of fire and lightning. Kakashi raised his arm in front of him to block the shockwave and the heat. He managed to save a little bit of chakra to fight Sasuke, but he was much slower than he would want to be. Kakashi moved to the side in a terse emergency motion after sensing a presence behind him. It was Toby. Somehow he got behind Kakashi without being noticed, and there wasn't a single scratch on him from Kakashi's attack. What? I was sure my attacks hit him this time. How? Toby jumped at him with an incredible burst of speed and raised his hand to Kakashi's face. He grasped Kakashi's Sharingan with his thumb and index finger. He wants to gouge out my Sharingan? Kakashi thought, closing his eye. At the same time, he activated Jugo's diamond skin jutsu, hardening the skin around his eye and eyelid so that the eye wouldn't just be pulled out and weaved hand signs. Raikiri! A burst of lightning exploded from his hand as Toby pulled on Kakashi's eye. But there was foolish. Toby overextended, and now he was wide open for a Raikiri strike. Kakashi thrust his Raikiri to the middle of Toby's chest and hit him, but he felt no resistance and heard no sound. What? Kakashi thought in disbelief as Toby faced through Kakashi's body as if he wasn't made of matter, as if he was just an illusion clone. He exited Kakashi from behind, but he was touching me a second ago. How's that possible? This can't be just a clone or genjutsu. Kakashi spun around and swung the Raikiri at Toby's neck. 
The attack hit, but it passed through it, doing nothing to Toby. Kakashi dashed back. He needed to create distance. That was scary! I thought you would cut my head off, Mr. Copy Ninja! Could it be that he can face through physical objects with his jutsu? That would be beyond problematic. But once my Rikiri found his chest, his hand faced through my eye as well. That means he shouldn't be able to attack and face at the same time. Or could he? He's not taking this fight seriously, so he could just be hiding his capabilities. Or perhaps this jutsu is something else in Entirely. I'm sorry, Mr. Copy Ninja. I thought I saw that pesky fly on your face, but it was a speck of dust right on your eye. Toby said, pointing at Kakashi's Sharingan. How am I going to deal with him? I can't fight someone with that jutsu by myself, so I'll have to summon reinforcements when Ino contacts me again. But then the other teams, they also occupied. Perhaps Team Shikamaru and Team Shino have dealt with their situations. I'll have to stall until reinforcements arrive. A strange piece of vegetation rose from the ground. Not out of the ground, but from it, as if they were fused. That piece of vegetation turned out to be a person, or whatever that thing was, with plant-like protrusions coming out of the neck, and a black and white face split in half. That was Zetsu. It was in Kabuto's notebook, and according to it, he was the Akatsuki spy. Mr. Zetsu! You scared me! I'm sorry, Toby, but I heard you were lost. Hey, it was this stupid fly that I'm trying to kill. It flew away, and I fell off the sky because of it. Oh, that's okay. You're a good boy. Oh, yeah, and I found the copy ninja! Toby pointed at Kakashi again. Reinforcements. If one was bad enough, fighting two of them at the same time is certain death, Kakashi thought. Return, Toby. Dater is worried about you. Senpai's worried about me? Of course, Dater. You're a good boy. Why would he not be worried? I think Senpai hates me. Just be quiet and return immediately. But the copy ninja and I were just starting to get to know each other, and they haven't found the fly yet. That is irrelevant. Return. Aw, oh, man. That's a bummer. Well, we can finish our dance routine some other time, right, Copy Ninja? Toby pulled smoke bombs out of his satchel and tossed them to the ground, concealing himself and Zetsu in it. Kakashi maintained a safe distance and kept his guard high. After all, Toby had vanished and disappeared before. When the smoke dispersed, the two Akatsukis were gone. Kakashi waited for a long time to make sure Toby wouldn't come back and started to once again make his way towards Team Neji. What the hell was that all about? Why did he retreat? He had an ample advantage against me. Is something else urgent happening? Maybe they found Naruto's location and will converge to capture him. And that Dater guy's here too. No, if that was the case, Ino would have contacted me. Unless she was eliminated before she could even do that. Damn it, splitting the battalion so thin was a terrible idea. I was careless, too eager to get to Sasuke. Kakashi thought and sped up, even though he barely had any chakra left. Kiba woke up, feeling pain all over his body. Akamaru leaked his face, which eased the pain. Sakura administered a faint, healing ninjutsu on him. Sasuke's allies were unconscious nearby, except for the woman who was bound. Shino was near them, overlooking their prisoners. What the hell happened? Shino saved us. We have those three captured now, and we'll probably use them to draw Sasuke to us. But none of us have much chakra left, so we're waiting orders from Kakashi Sensei. I see. A fire blast engulfed them, and sent Kiba, Akamaru, and Sakura flying away. Shino's insects were obliterated in the gust of flames, but he stood his ground with the help of his special fire-resistant overcoat. His dark goggles allowed him to see an outline through the bright flames. It was a man, spewing fire-style ninjutsu. Where did he come from? Is that Sasuke? Shino thought, perplexed, and he regretted the fact that he couldn't use his golden thief bugs anymore. You are quite vexing, the figure said from within the flames, with an intimidating voice. No, that's not Sasuke's voice. The figure weaved hand signs and spewed a concentrated chakra blast towards Shino. He jumped to avoid it, but the fire exploded before it even impacted him, burning Shino's overcoat away and launching him dozens of meters. He hit a section of the rubble and felt his ribs cracking with a powerful impact. Shino stood up with shaky legs and burned all over. Sakura, Kiba, and Akamaru were also severely hurt, but Shino opened his toe-biter gourd, releasing the large flying insects. He waited for the next attack to come, but he never did. Rather, once the flames and smoke cleared, Shino realized that the three ninjas they had captured were gone. Two of them were unconscious, and the other one was tied up, so whoever launched the fire attack rescued them. What happened? Sakura asked in a pained voice. Someone extracted them, someone strong, and it wasn't Sasuke. Damn it, they couldn't have gone too far. Shino sent his bugs to search for the perpetrator and the three former captives, but they couldn't find anyone in the city or near it. Whoever it was probably used space-time ninjutsu to flee with the captives. Sakura looked at the destroyed set of the city and let out a sigh of agony. So all this was worthless? We got some intel, but I'm afraid this skirmish was a failure.
Lee fell down the sky, powerless from the recoil damage of the gates. His hands still clutched the Fuma shuriken Sasuke had tossed, his muscles locked in that position. The other shuriken was still stuck on Lee's ribcage. He gritted his teeth as he was about to hit the ground, with the shuriken on his hand puffed into white smoke, revealing Sasuke's form. He caught Lee, and they both landed safely on the ground, close to the explosion blast Lee created. What? How? Lee asked, perplexed, but he understood. Sasuke had created a clone and transformed the original into the Fuma Shuriken, which the clone tossed towards Lee while he was inside the burning snake. Sasuke then dropped Lee and casually walked away. No, wait! Sasuke stopped and turned around. He was taken aback after seeing Lee standing there. Through sheer power of will, you've got guts, but I won the fight. You can barely move, and I can still fight just fine. Not yet. The fight is not over. Rock Lee was barely conscious. His legs were shaking from the simple simple effort of standing up. By the way, the answer is me, Sasuke said as lightning flashed in the sky. Dark clouds were forming above. What? What happens when the genius works harder than the hard worker? I worked harder than you, and I have the talent. Hard work can beat natural talent when natural talent is complacent, but it will never beat a genius that works even harder. That's not true. How hard did you train? 20 hours a day, every day for three years non-stop. I almost died dozens of times. I know what it means to work hard. Heavy rain began to pour. Sasuke looked up and smiled as his face was illuminated by flashes of lightning. And I didn't even show you half of what I can do. No, I won't accept this. I just won't. Your fight is to prove to the world you can be strong despite your lack of talent. I fight for something bigger than myself. You are the one who can't understand. I fight for the legacy of my bloodline. I carry the resolution of ghosts. That's why I trained as hard as I did, for my true enemy is the incarnation of evil. Why don't you join us? We can help you get Itachi. As I said, you don't understand. If that's true, he really did train harder than me. If I can't match that, if I can't match Sasuke's efforts, then I'll never be able to surpass him. Lee yanked the Fuma Shuriken out of his ribcage. He still had a mission to fulfill. No matter what happened, he was a shinobi of the Leaf Village. And he had to stop Sasuke here. Lee raised his arms in frustration, crossing them and assuming the inner gate's formation. I will show you. My work wasn't in vain. Sasuke. Eight inner gates. Seventh gate. Lee concentrated, focusing his chakra through the inner gates once more. He had never reached the seventh gate before. But right now, forcing its activation was the only way Lee could win. He screamed, psyching himself up and roaring from the pain. Sasuke stayed with his Sharingan, he could see Lee's chakra passing through each gate. Seventh gate, huh? That could be interesting. Depending on how long he could maintain it, I would have to go all out. Lee kept on screaming as the chakra passed through the fourth and fifth gates. Please, Guy Sensei, make this work! I have to at least delay him long enough for the others to arrive! Team Yamato dashed through the rain. The column of smoke that rose after the mushroom cloud was getting closer and closer, and lightning illuminated the sky. Naruto could Feel it. Sasuke! He screamed into the rain. Lee's chakra crossed through the sixth gate. Veins bobbed all over his body, and his muscles were being torn apart. It was a Herculean effort. Now, just one more, and I will force the seventh to activate. Please, Guy Sensei, witness me! Lee roared in pain. He could no longer distinguish what was himself and what was agony. Lightning flashes illuminated his effort as the rain pelted him. Sasuke saw the chakra get getting close to the seventh gate below the stomach, and he read it himself. Seventh gate! The gate of wonder! Open! Lee's body snapped, and the chakra recoiled all the way back in a split second. He fell face first to the wet ground, and his consciousness was fading. The pain was simply overwhelming. He failed. He couldn't reach the seventh gate. Lee cried. It was the same story as when he fought Gara, and the last thing he heard before passing out was something Sasuke said that would become etched in his mind forever. With a calm face and those crimson eyes, he calmly uttered the phrase, You should have worked harder. Watch part 50 of the rewrite right here. Please like the video and also subscribe, ring those notifications, do all those good things. And if you want to check out the artists that drew art for this episode, they're linked in the description below. Comment what you thought about this episode and thank you so much for watching, guys.